Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Barar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Triveni Engineering and Industries Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Tarun Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Suresh Taneja, Group CFO, Mr. Samir Sena, CEO, Sugar Business Group, as well as other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was shared with everyone earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will commence the call with opening remarks from the management following an interactive question and answer session. May I now hand it over to Mr. Tarun Soni. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q1 Fiscal 25 Earnings Conference Call for Sraveni Engineering and Industries Limited. For the quarter under review, the revenue from operations stood at 1301 crores, the PBT just a shade under 42 crores, and the PAT was 31 crores. The net turnover increased by 8.6%, mainly due to a higher sugar turnover of 12% due to similar increases in sales volumes and approximately a 5% increase in realization price. The turnover of the power transmission business improved marginally by 1%, whereas there was a marginal decline of 2% in the turnover of the alcohol business due to lower sales volumes, despite higher production. However, the turnover of the water business has declined by 21% due to certain delays in the award of contracts or projects. The PBT is 54% lower at 41.8 crores. Segment profitability was lower across the businesses with the exception of the water business, where cost savings led to a higher profitability. The profitability of the sugar business, despite higher contribution on sugar sold, was lower due to lower production and higher charge of off-season expenses owing to the earlier closure of the sugar season. The profitability of the alcohol business was adversely impacted due to restrictions that had been imposed by the government on grain feedstocks, and as a result of which the rice operations were substituted by maize. In, and, of course, there was an increasing transfer price of molasses and due to the lower sales volume of 4.3%, which was lower dispatch from ethanol from higher margin sugarcane-based feedstocks. Looking at business-wise highlights in the sugar business, we achieved a blended realization of, 39, of over 39 rupees per kilo, an increase of almost 5% over the previous corresponding period. This is because of improved domestic realizations. In the alcohol business, it reported the highest ever quarterly production of 5.5 crore liters, an increase of 8.3% over the previous corresponding period due to the additional capacities uh, being commissioned. The company's IMFL business commenced its operations in July, in the month of July 2024, with the launch of two brands in the state of Uttar Pradesh, the Crafter Stamp, which is in the super premium category, and Matsya, which is in the premium category. The power transmission business reported a 12% increase in order booking this quarter and a record closing, uh, order, order book closing of 306 crores which is an improvement of 12.5% over the corresponding period. Uh, and of course, it's important to mention that we've crossed an important milestone of 300 crores on the booking for the first time in our history. In the water business, we're happy to report that the business has been favorably placed for a project in Europe, about 250 odd crores, and we are eagerly anticipating the letter of award in the immediate future. We will update 
more details on this in due course. And there are several other uh, projects which we're expecting the award also um, in the next uh, few weeks or so. The debt position of the company on a standalone basis on June 30th increased. The debt position increased to 1,150 crores as compared to 920 crores on June 30th, 23. The standalone debt at the end of the period under review comprises of 245 crores of term loans, and all such loans are with interest subvention. On a consolidated basis, the gross debt is 1,281 crores on the 30th of June 24, compared to 1,011 crores as on June 30th, 23. The overall cost of funds on a standalone basis stood at 7.2% versus 6.7% in the previous corresponding period. In the last call, when we're turning to our sugar business, in the last call, the sugar season 23-24 had just concluded. Since then, we have been focused on preparing for the upcoming season. And the focus has been to restore normalcy in our sugar operations, and we are vigorously working towards this direction, looking at uprooting any infected crop, <coughs> substituting vulnerable varieties with more robust varieties, enhancing yield with on-ground intervention at a scale that we have never written, uh, even larger than what we had done in the previous few years, um, and stepping up of surveillance activities to get early warnings for any challenges to our crop. And the challenges could be with respect to uh, increased water levels, it could be due to disease, it could be due to pests, or any other conditions, agronomic conditions that can impact the crop. I think the sensitivity is at an all-time high for the group, and we're eagerly anticipating the upcoming season. And we continue, from an operating perspective, to focus on premium products, such as refined sugar and pharmaceutical-grade sugar, which now, on a collective basis, comprise of 70% of the overall sugar production of the company. And this will, of course, further improve the profitability profile of the company as we look forward. The company reported a 12% increase in the sugar segment revenues to just under 1,000 crores, which improved 12% year-on-year, um, driven by 12% higher realizations and 5% improved, sorry, 12% higher dispatches and 5% improved realizations. Uh, it must be noted, of course, there were no exports in this quarter. From a segment profitability perspective, profits in the sugar business declined up to 36.5 crores, a decline of 26.5%. And this was despite the higher contribution on the sugar sold. And it was, of course, due to lower production and a higher charge of the oxies and expenses in this quarter due to the earlier closure of the season. The sugar inventory on the 30th of June 24 was 44.73 lakh quintals, valued at an average of 35.2 rupees per kilo. Presently, sugar prices are at their recent highs, and we are selling refined sugar at 39.90 rupees uh, an X factory for refined grade sugar, and sulfitation sugar at 39.40 rupees per quintal X factory as well. Pretty good prices, and I. I believe that these prices will uh, remain at these levels, at least for the immediate future, and of course, some gentle increases as we get into the holiday season in late September and early October, and through the month of October. Uh, this actually bodes well uh, as far as the pricing, the immediate future as far as sugar pricing is concerned. Looking at the balance sheet from a nationwide perspective, we anticipate an opening balance for next year on the 1st of October 24, of approximately 9 million metric tons against domestic sales of higher than 29 million tons of sugar. And, this, and for next year, we expect that the closing stock without exports remain around about the same, and this is considering a 4.5 million ton diversion of sugar into ethanol for the 24-25 sugar season. I must caveat this by saying that these are our own internal estimates uh, from our research group. Looking at the international industry scenario, as per S&P Global, 
uh, the sugar balance sheet is pointing towards a reasonable, reasonably large surplus of about five and a half million tons. And, and the outlook looks largely balanced, um, despite the surpluses uh, in Thailand, in Europe, and, and in India. International sugar prices, after a remarkable performance in the last fiscal year, have trended downward as the news of this larger balance for future balance has percolated through the markets. And we've seen that decline not only in, in whites but also in, in rows. However, in the last few days, we've seen a recent a surge in pricing, but we're still substantially lower than the highs that we had um, just a few quarters ago. Turning to our alcohol business, during the quarter, we commissioned the Rani Nangal distillery, which led to the highest ever quarterly production of five and a half crore liters, placing us amongst the leading ethanol manufacturers in the country. Sales volume were lower by 4.3% over the corresponding period due to dispatch schedules moving into the next quarter while the ethanol is held in inventory. The feedstock mix of ethanol of alcohol that has been sold is 58.42 sugar cane to grain in this quarter, very much in line with what I had mentioned to you in our last earnings call and even the previous earnings call. And last year it is important to note that it was 64 to 36 sugar cane to grain. So very much uh, changed as a result of market dynamics, the fact that there was a curtailment of diversion of sugar towards the ethanol program. Uh, however, we were capably set up to be able to process grain. Um, there, are, there are challenges around that, but at least we had the capacity and the infrastructure to be able to process large quantums of grain, so to keep up the, the, the total volumes uh, for the company. The domestic scenario as far as ethanol, uh, the OMCs had floated a tender for 825 crore liters with a 15% blending target. Till the 30th of June, contracts for 714 crore liters have been executed by the OMCs with 61% coming from sugarcane based feedstocks and the balance 39% or 281 crore liters coming from grain based feedstocks. The OMCs have thus far procured 400 crore liters out of the total contracted quantity up to the 30th of June 24. And with this procurement, ethanol produced from grain based feedstocks contributes to 53%, i.e., 211 crore liters, while sugarcane based feedstocks contributes to a smaller number, 47%, about approximately 190 crore liters. This marks the first time that the ethanol from grain has actually surpassed ethanol from sugarcane based feedstocks. And the achieved blending percentage nationwide was 13% as of the 30th of June 24. I must say that while the target was given at 15%, the achievement of 13%, given the challenges that have, that have existed across the country, given the fact that we were in the middle of an election year, uh, and given the fact that there were several infrastructure issues that needed to be uh, hurdled, a 13% achievement is most commendable. And I think that we are certainly on the angle of achieving even higher blending percentages, the thought process at this particular point is the government will try and achieve 18% blending next year. In the next supply year, moving quickly to the 20% which was targeted uh, by the Honorable Prime Minister um, for, for many, many years, right? Looking at the power transmission business, CTB has been on a sustained growth path over the year, and this quarter has also performed extremely well, and there were several breakthrough orders, uh, especially with international eminent customers and OEMs. The company continues to witness excellent demand for its products, including in the high technology compressor gearbox market, and a recent uh, addition, uh, once again, has been a demand for the high power small hydro turbine applications both domestically and internationally. Other, other very promising segments include high power API, which is adhering to uh, the requirements of the oil and gas um, and petrochemical sector, integrated gear boxes as well, also adhering to the same sector as well. The outstanding order book, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, stands above the 300 crore milestone at 306 crores with longer duration orders of approximately a third of that portion. Uh, this is um, a record for us and I hope that we will be uh, achieving a continuous record in, in subsequent quarters coming forward. 
Turning to the water business, revenues have declined because of delay in execution in certain projects and the delay in award of certain projects. And I had mentioned to you on the last call that I was not waiting with bated breath for the last three months because we were in election season across the nation. And it would take time for things to revert to normal and for projects to come. And I'm uh, very happy to report that over the next few weeks, we expect many projects to be finally concluded. And we are, um, we believe we are very, very well placed for a few of those projects. In the opening remarks, of course, I mentioned that we have uh, we are extremely favorably placed for a 250 crore project in Europe, um, and we're expecting the reward of that um, in the next few days itself. Uh, the PVT margins of the water business stood at 12% um, for the quarter, and the outstanding water book on the 30th of June stood at just shade under 1,200 crores, which included 867 crores towards O and M contracts over the slightly longer period of time. I'll quickly move to the outlook for the businesses. In view of the very comfortable inventory situation in the country, we are very hopeful that the government will do away with the feedstock restrictions and address ethanol and address the ethanol pricing framework as well and look at the viability of both grain-based and sugarcane feedstock-based distilleries. Uh, in essence, uh, it, it's a two-pronged process. Firstly, there was a limitation in terms of what could be diverted. We expect that to be lifted in the very near future. And we expect that the government may very well look at absorbing all the quantities of ethanol that will come from the sugar sector. Um, I do believe that this uh, will require another a revisit in prices, which did not happen last year, um, both for sugarcane-based feedstock ethanol as well as grain-based ethanol as well. Um, from both sides, Treveni would benefit uh, with any increase in, in the price. The industry is also keenly awaiting the revision to the MSP of sugar, which is vital to the sustainability of the industry. The MSP, as many of you know, has remained unchanged since 2019, while input for costs and uh, sugarcane price, both FRP and SAP, have risen significantly. The association, ISMA, has made a very rational uh, request to DSPD and to other ministries of requesting a rate of 39.14 rupees per kilo for sugar as the MSP for the country. And it's a very logical explanation based on the previous increases in MSP that have happened. Now we're hopeful that the government will look at this favorably and will give a high increase uh, to MSP. Again, one anticipates that this is very much on the cards, certainly before the, the next crushing season and hopefully before the end of this quarter. Sugar prices, as I had mentioned even in our last call, um, I'm happy to report that, that we were correct, that they have remained at very healthy levels uh, throughout the quarter and going forward I expect some small increases in, in pricing. Uh, it could be because of increases in MSP, it could be because of very rational releases that have been given by the FPD, and it could also be due to other uh, factors. But I do see that sugar price stability is something that is not of a concern, certainly to us at Slovenia. Looking at the power transmission business group outlook, uh, Indian economic activity has continued its momentum. And we believe that both in India and export markets are very nicely primed with a lot of replacement orders, a lot of new fresh projects that are coming up, especially in the sectors of oil and gas and petrochemicals, and some basic industry sectors as well, contributing to significant growth. Our international customer outreach has been extensive, the efforts have been extensive, and we've made continuous investments in research and development a lot of which, which has resulted in a material cost uh, decreases, uh, as we've seen in, in, in this quarter that has gone by, a lot, and it has to do with the R&D programs and the successful outlook of those, um, of those R&D programs. And of course, the R&D initiatives do continue, and we're hopeful to have even more improvements, both on the cost side and the addressable market side, as far as our gearboxes from the power transmission business are concerned. The Government of India's continuing trust on Arthur Bharat and Make in India has directly opened a plethora of opportunities for indigenization 
of imported gearboxes, and we expect this to be a growth driver um, for both the, the industry as well as the uh, aftermarket business and including defense as well. In the defense segment, the business expects increased order booking from some critical segments, and we've progressed quite a long way. Of course, during the course of the elections, there were a few orders that were that were finalized again, and we're anticipating that over the next few weeks and quarters, um, we will be able to get back to business as usual, and there's a lot of business that is awarded where we are contending. As far as the water business outlook is concerned, we're placed very favorably in a variety of different bits, and we're expecting uh, that those awards in the next few weeks. So that's quite close, um, and, and we are actually very, very positive about a few of those bits as well. From a longer term perspective, given the significant gap between the demand and the current availability of water and, water and waste water treatment plants, the water sector by and large has a very, very positive outlook in, in the nation. And not just in the nation, also externally and internationally, we're seeing a lot more focus coming on, on water. Um, and the company continues to evaluate various international opportunities and intends to participate in several tenders for international projects. Turning quickly to the company's new subsidiary, SSEL, Sir Shadi Lal Enterprises Limited. During the quarter, the company has further acquired 36.34% equity stake of SSEL on June 20th from the balance members of the promoter group under a share purchase agreement. The company now cumulatively holds 61.77% of the total shareholding of SSEL. Consequently, the company has become a subsidiary of Triveni, and the company, in compliance with applicable laws, has launched an open offer for the acquisition of 26% voting shares of SSEL. On, this was, of course, on January 30th, 24, but we, that process is well underway. We've received SEBI approval, and we expect that open offer to conclude during the month of August 24. The, in terms of concluding remarks, I think we are very hopeful for a robust performance from the sugar sector this coming year and a robust performance from the distillery sector this coming year, uh, led by improvements in pricing, led by more availability of raw material on the sugar side. We're expecting a greater quantum of sugar cane. Um, and then we have a very positive outlook uh, on the engineering businesses as well as I had mentioned, both gearbox and defense, as well as in the water and waste water treatment. I'd be delighted now to take some questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their telephone <coughs> telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Manyal from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I uh, have a few questions on the sugarcane uh, uh, crushing uh, side. Uh, means what is our expectation for the next season? Uh, given the last season was uh, a bit subdued uh, with 11% decline in crushing number, uh, uh, what is our expectation? What is the work we are uh, doing in terms of the uh, you know the uh, variety change uh, uh, in our in our catchment area? Right. Uh, so, multi excellent question, multi pronged question, and I think I'm going to take you back to comments that I made in previous conference calls. We were actually just reviewing it before this conference call. Um, as you know, last year we had 77% of 238 variety across the seven sugar units. This year, and I had mentioned at that point in time that our target was to bring this around 50%, and I'm happy to report that that reduction has been achieved. So, in all sensitive areas, waterlogged areas, low lying areas, we have eradicated 238. The intention, of course, is to take this to halve it again in the following year as well, and then only to keep it in opportunistic areas, because it does give a good return if it is not disease affected, and it will last for a few more years. So very much, my answer is very much the same as what I had mentioned one quarter ago and two quarters ago, and we're back on track in terms of what we had set as targets for us. Now, 
given that fact that we have managed to eradicate large tracts of area under 228, we've and substituted for other excellent varieties, we've found that our area under Kent has increased. The surveys are now on. I can't give you an exact number right now, but we're looking at, a, uh, at an increases in, in area under cane for the group as a whole. Um, and also, we're looking at a possible double-digit increase in the cane availability for our sugar business for next year. Now, you know, uh, I have to mention that we're only halfway through the monsoons. So, you know, to have early estimates, I've offered you an early estimate. Uh, that this is given the fact that given what rainfall, what weather patterns, and the impact of pest and disease, minimal impact of pest and disease that we have seen thus far. However, reading this morning papers, which I'm sure you've done as well, we're looking at a lot of rainfall coming our way in the month of August and September. I think the hope has to be that in the month of September, whatever rainfall happens, it happens in the first half, so that it does not it does not affect the early start of the sugar factories in October of 2024. So uh, given that we have balanced weather and balanced weather events, I think we're certainly as a group looking at a good rebound uh, as far as our sugar operations are concerned. And we have been very successful in our game development. Uh, we have achieved all the targets that we set ourselves out to. Uh, of course, our program is a multi-year program. It's a multi-pronged program, uh, but we're very happy with the successes that we've had uh, thus far. Yeah. Uh, so you men mentioned that uh, you are expecting a double-digit kind of uh, uh, increase in the uh, you know sugarcane availability. So are you including uh, the acquired entity in this, or uh, you are talking only about the uh, standalone entity? I'm talking about a standalone entity. The uh, subsidiary company is, is an independent company, and I'm not addressing their targets. Although I do believe that. The, they had a very particularly poor crushing season last year uh, because they had a very short season. There were some administrative issues which led to a very delayed start for the sugar factory um, and also an early end because of some engineering challenges uh, for the season. Uh, Treveni having taken over the management control of, Shari, of Sir Shavilal, we anticipate that we will get back to business as usual and a substantial increase in sugarcane crush at that factory in the upcoming sugar season. Right, right. So, so one uh, question on the on the ethanol uh, side uh, means uh, we have done uh, uh, now we have uh, sort of completed our uh, uh, our uh, ethanol uh, capex. Uh, uh, ideally, uh, with this kind of a capacity per day, we means annual number ideally should be close to 24 crore liters if I'm not wrong. Uh, so can we have some guidance on that front? What kind of number are we looking uh, in FI25 and uh, FI26? So you see, then uh, FI25, uh, we are looking what we mentioned in the previous one of a number in excess of 21 crore liters, right? And it was also explained that with maize, the capacity is a little lower, uh, and therefore, uh, you are while you are right, otherwise it should have been 24 crore liters. And going forward, we would be at a significantly higher number, close to about 25 pro liters in FY26 from the same set of assets. Exactly. And I will just add that we have one project still on hold. It remains on hold until we see the next molasses um, pricing by the central government, and at which point we will review that project. But as I mentioned on previous calls, the engineering work has all been completed. It's just a matter of ordering the equipment, and uh, given our track record, uh, we can have a distillery up and running in three quarters flat um, at the stage that we're at, so in, in pretty good time. So with that, of course, we'll return to the 30, 30, 30 crore plus um, uh, target rate, but at, that, at this particular point, that, that distillery remains on hold with the capacities that we've had. You just went from Sunil. We should be at a, a, a very good annual production rate. Surely, sir, surely. Just, just last one on the engineering business. Uh, means the current quarter uh, performance uh, on the gear uh, business has been, uh, uh, we can we can say a bit muted uh, from the from the revenue side. So is it uh, is it just have to do uh, uh, means I, I, water business certainly has been impacted by the election uh, part. So means what could explain the uh, the gear business uh, performance as of now? So it, it was very much budgeted. Uh, this is not uh, and we 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 have performed. 
in fact, a little bit better than our budgets as well. One has to recognize that the, the last quarter was uh, an election quarter for the country. And so for several weeks, there was a lot of delays and a lot of companies and clients not accepting orders. And we had many clients that have just delayed our accounting policies that we will only account for revenues or to dispatch orders. Our finished goods has increased uh, and we will expect a huge catch up to happen in Q2. This was all planned. I think we're very happy with the uh, with both the numbers, uh, both on the top line as well as on the bottom line. Uh, you can also see from the order booking increase that uh, that 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 I would I would discourage you to look <coughs> quarter on quarter in this business. I think you know with engineering goods you always find that at the end of the half, which is Q2 and Q, especially Q4, a lot of companies. Uh, it will take advantage of depreciation, uh, accept deliveries in those quarters. So it's, it's he you typically heavily skewed towards Q2 and Q4. Right, sir. Right, sir. Uh, thank you, and uh, I'll get back to in the queue uh, if I have no more questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Somnath Saha from BNK Securities, India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. My question is uh, regarding the distributed segment. Now, uh, it is evident that uh, the margin is significantly lower when we use mains. And even after that, we are continuing with mains. So I really wanted to understand the thought process here. I mean, the, talking about the other big players, they yeah. have admitted mains is not profitable at all. So wanted to understand this. Uh, is this because you run, want to run the facilities or anything else you have in mind, sir? Yes, um, so again, you know, I think uh, I stand behind what we've said in the last few quarters. The mail's profitability is severely dampened because of the market dynamics. Despite prices for the output, for the ethanol made for mail is increasing, because you have unfettered increases in the input cost of mail, the entire advantage has been taken up by either the trade and some portion to the farmers. Farmers is a good portion, but the, the huge increases that have gone to the trade have unfortunately meant that the margin scope for uh, ethanol manufacturers uh, has, has, has been problematic. Now, you know, as far as we're concerned, we have co-joint facilities. The bulk of our facilities are next to our super factories, and therefore uh, we have lower uh, conversion costs because, if, you know, it could be fuel costs, it could be a whole host of other um, input costs being lower. But for the industry as a whole, since you asked a question for industry, I think maize at this point poses a huge problem. Now, what is the solution around it? And, and yes, it does. For Q2 as well, uh, we will be processing a, a large part of, we're one of the largest maize uh, processors in the, in the nation right now at Trinity. And so we can see this as a you know, first-hand view uh, of what is going on in the market. And honestly speaking, in, under this present scenario, the margin simply has evaporated because of increases in input cost prices. Now, there have been many um, representations that have been made to the government that we need to find innovative ways of ensuring that there is renewed health as far as the grain opportunity is concerned. We will always be slightly better off because, our, because of our co-joint facilities at River Factory. But honestly speaking, and I've seen the representations that have come from the Grain Manufacturers Association to the government, uh, they are hurting very much so um, at, at present input, input prices. So I think that in the next policy, I am very hopeful that we will have some multi-pronged pricing strategies that would allow people uh, to get back to the types of margins that we were experiencing earlier, and especially with, uh, when we were processing FCI guys. And you won't remember that the margins of FCRIs were actually very, very healthy and attractive. Um, and with the state governments having been allowed to procure rice by the central government, as you are well aware, I think the, the availability of rice to the distillery sector, to the ethanol program, I think is just a few steps away. Uh, and it may very well happen in the next few quarters, given the purchasing stocks and given the high output of rice uh, yeah, um, of seasonal rights in the country. Thank you, sir. That was my question. Also, if you can just quantify the uh, sugar cane crushing numbers for the quarter and uh, the, uh, and the uh, recovery for both gross and net recovery for the quarters. I'm sorry, you have to speak up. You uh, we didn't get. You said crushing numbers for the quarter. We missed the next question. 
Uh, during the quarter, we crushed 66.7 lakh quintals as compared to 157.7 lakh quintals in the previous uh, uh, quarter and our gross recovery was 12.35 as compared to 12.43 in the previous quarter. And so the net recovery, sir? Sorry. Net. Net, net recovery was 11.41% as compared to 10.58% in the previous quarter. Production was 7.6 lakh quintals as compared to 16.7 lakh quintals in the previous quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask questions, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Ryan Dayal, Dalal from FICOM. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so my uh, question is on the on the power and defense business. Uh, so are we on track on uh, to commission the facility uh, the expansion in December? So the uh, the expansion in the existing facility is very much on track. In fact, we I anticipate that this facility will be commissioned uh, six weeks in advance. Uh, so we're hoping that in the month of November itself. Just after Diwali, we will be able to commission the new gearbox facility. As far as the defense facility is, is concerned, we've had a slippage and we'll be about a quarter late. So we're looking uh, at the commissioning of that facility in uh, the first half of the next calendar year. Got it. And uh, so the incremental capacity that will come on in, in, the, in the power business, uh, could you give a sense of, uh, you know, the end industry use of uh, the demand growth that you're seeing maybe in the domestic market and maybe on, on an international level as well? Absolutely. So we're seeing strength in, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll talk about OEM segments and then I'll talk about industry for, and, and, and customer segments as well. Um, as far as OEM are concerned, we've seen huge growth domestically and internationally. In fact, all of our OEMs are global OEMs, uh, and we've seen an enormous growth in order booking uh, and deliveries, and, we're, and, and the future forecasts are for even better rates of growth uh, from, from these levels. Now, um, this covers segments such as steam turbines, it covers compressors, it covers the pump segment as well. The one sector which is a little bit of a dampener, which has always been a tiny little, tiny little uh, uh, sector for us, given that the infrastructure does not really exist in India, is on the gas side. So you know that that has been um, kind of muted, but but it, it accounts for such a small amount that it does really matter. The three sectors that I've mentioned have been absolutely outstanding uh, in terms of growth from from the OEM side. Uh, looking at the the, the Final uh, user segments, we're seeing huge opportunities domestically and internationally in the API segment. So oil and gas, petrochemicals, uh, across the board, uh, both onshore and offshore, are looking extremely exciting um, as far as the gearbox requirements are concerned. We're seeing huge developments in, uh, in the mining sector as well as in cement and steel both domestically and internationally. So it's, it's, uh, funnily enough, the, the demand has been mirrored in export orders as what we're experiencing in India. Uh, I think the one sector that is where, where we've seen orders decline is the distillery sector in India, which had accounted for a lot of gearboxes in the past. The distillery orders um, have stood muted, but you know, it, again, it's such a tiny segment now compared to our overall business that it doesn't really feature. Got it. Got it. And uh, so if I may uh, uh, ask another question. Uh, on the defense segment, uh, our tie-up with uh, General Electric, uh, just wanted to know, like, you know, how we, uh, maybe the work that we've done on the LM2500 engine, uh, maybe just the, just the idea of, like, you know, how things are going on that end. And do we expect any sort of a delivery or soon on that product or anything of that sort? So that program is a, is, is a, is a two-decade program. The first few orders are yet to even be allocated. I think the, the, 
the as far as nomination of the order, it's already gone. Uh, for the core to come from GE, the assembly to happen at HAL, and the packaging to happen at Treveni. So okay. we're hopeful that for the next generation of warships, uh, these orders will be placed relatively soon. But our defense portfolio goes well beyond uh, just uh, the packaging of, of gas turbines. Uh, we're looking at uh, several orders in the smaller uh, GTG space, gas turbine space, very exciting that should be included during the course of this calendar year. Uh, we have several live projects. We're the only company in the country that builds shaft lines. Uh, as you know, we're building shaft lines for subsea platforms. We're also building shaft lines for micro So we need the full spectrum. Um, and we're anticipating several new orders there. We're doing a lot of work on gearboxes for the Coast Guard and the Navy orders that we've won. A lot of orders on pumps for the Navy uh, as well, uh, pre key application pumps, and the, and the products go on. So, what we have uh, tried to do is expand our exposure for mechanical equipment and tie up where we need to tie up or develop technology where we need to develop our own health technology. It's a dual prong process that is centered around the Atma Nirbhar India program. Got it. Got it. Great. Uh, thank you so much for answering all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask questions, you may please press star and one on your touchstone telephones. The next question is from the line of Manish Dhariwal from Fiducia Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, very good afternoon, and uh, thank you for sharing a very uh, detailed perspective about the sugar sector uh, as it is expected to play out for the company. Now, uh, you also uh, spoke about the acquisition of uh, Sarshadi Lal. Uh, see, we already are a pretty, uh, you know, we're one of the leading players in the game. So, uh, some, uh, some insights into the rationale for this. Uh, Acquisition, which we find is maybe it's a very old, uh, you know, plant and machinery must be dilapidated. You mentioned that the sugar season was also very low, and the kind of price that we paid for it. So, uh, you know, all these. So, uh, 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 we request for some insight into what went for this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, decision. Right. Very happy to provide an answer to this question. I think, uh, as far, and, and I'll start from your last question and move backwards. As far as the price that was paid uh, for the shares that have been acquired, uh, you know, we did a valuation exercise internally and looked at what that asset would be worth. And I think we're very happy with the price that we've paid. We believe that this is uh, going to be significantly accretive acquisition for the company. Um, as in the short term and definitely in the long term. That's from a financial perspective. I can't go into the numbers in, in terms of payback, et cetera, because that's not public information. But what I can say is the strategic part of it, which is very important. Shamli is, has possibly the best farm area and acreage in the state of Uttar Pradesh, the best. The farmers are the most loyal and have been for decades. Yes, there's been a blip in the last few years due to a variety of issues, especially the management issues and operational issues at the unit, uh, and that has led to some amount of um, disharmony in terms of relationships with the farming community, but that still does not change the essence of, of what the farmers deliver. Um, Shamli is a factory that has had the longest season in terms of operating days in my um, 30 year experience in the sugar industry, it, it, for the vast majority of years, it has the longest operating season. And the reason for that is the, 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 the tie that they have with the farming community. We believe that we will be able to revive this tie immediately uh, with the farmers. And I think we've had very great success, great support from local communities as we've taken over the management operations on the 21st of June 2024. That's number one. Number two, the yield in Shamli is one of the highest, and that too holds well for the future in terms of operating at higher capacities for the future, etc. Yes, it means that you will have to invest 
in uh, some more capex, but we will make those decisions in a very prudent manner like we do looking at returns. Uh, this is a demonstrated uh, uh, strength that we have at Thraveni. Uh, we'll continue to apply the same science in all investments made in Sir Shalidhar. The third important factor for this acquisition has been its close proximity to two of our largest factories. We buy cane from Shamli Society, that's the cane society, both for our factory at Deoband and for our factory at Kadwadi. So we have immense knowledge and now we've been able to actually capture a, a more uh, uh, adjoining area. And we believe that in the medium term, the, uh, we will have significant advantages by having areas that are connected and sugar factories that are connected. So there has been a huge strategic rationale besides a financial rationale in terms of acquisition of this company. Uh, thank you. Uh, so are there any plans to uh, merge this company into the main uh, uh, corporate or uh, how would you like to kind of take it forward? At, at this point in time, we're in the open offer process. You can't do anything. You're bound by uh, the laws of the land in terms of, uh, uh, of looking at uh, uh, any other optionality. And as and when the boards decide for any corporate action, we will, of course, uh, in inform the internet the stock exchanges. At this particular point in time, we're just interested in focusing on a quick R&M program that is cost-effective so that we can actually have a record season at Sir Shadi Lal uh, in 24-25. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, insight. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dheeraj Ram from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations for the great set of numbers. My question is more focused towards the water sector. Uh, historically, we have seen payments delaying in this water treatment uh, segment. So do you see any further delays in payments going forward from state or central government? Or how do you think the order inflow is for us? Is, is it more confined towards state government or central government, or are you planning to go into any ham kind of projects? So we are already in ham projects. Our orders are evenly split between state and center. Uh, actually, the, 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 the orders that we're expecting finalization, the majority for the next few quarters are all state, but historically it's been split between state and center. Um, but we don't, we don't really experience any payment delays on, on the work because they have um, very finely targeted timelines and it's performance based. It's metric toll gate based payments that happen. <clears throat> on the OMM side, sometimes it takes an extra few days, etc. but nothing that is inordinate and nothing that is not expected. I, I wouldn't even classify that as a, as, as a significant risk to the business. Got it, sir. And, and post budget, do you see any uh, increase in action going on from this waste water segment? Uh, I'm hoping that there will be a lot of funds getting allocated for this particular segment going forward. So, how do you see in the next two to three years? Yeah, I think you asked a great question. I, I think it's, it's outstanding the, the amount of inquiries that have been generated post the elections. State governments, municipalities, and the central government. Water is playing an absolutely pivotal role in the infrastructure agenda of the, of the nation. And you're absolutely right. So when we look at our inquiry book and the new inquiries that have just come about, even in the last few, uh, few weeks since the elections, of course, you know, the, the ideation had started earlier, but we're getting close to the bidding stages. Uh, we're seeing a huge push on all fronts and across the country. Across the country is the most important part of this. Got it. And one last question, if I can squeeze in. Uh, we could see a lot of players entering into this wastewater treatment segment lately. So, do you see any competition wise while bidding for the, for the projects? Do you see any competition here? You know, I think it's a sector that has competition across all facets of it. You know, as far as wastewater is concerned, you will have a different set of players. Uh, but, but I think it is, a, it is a competitive environment because it holds so much attractiveness as an industrial sector. Uh, you see different players from different segments. Uh, we find ourselves in a very unique spot 
of killing across segments and having RPQs across segments, which is a, a rarity, frankly speaking, uh, for players in, in the world of business in, 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 in India. Got it, sir. Uh, and and uh, all, all the best for you, Sri Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for the Q1 Fiscal 25 earnings call for Sevenny Engineering and Industries Limited. Uh, I think we're at a very exciting point in time for across our businesses. Um, sugar and ethanol are expecting huge changes, uh, for, especially for the central government. MSP is on the anvil. Exports could potentially be considered in, 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 in the immediate future as well to evacuate some stocks. The world, global world market price has risen recently. I'm quite certain we'll be able to export at uh, good returns, frankly speaking. As far as ethanol is concerned, I'm anticipating a huge uh, improvement in terms of pricings and structural improvements to ensure that both grain and sugarcane based feed stocks are measured out with equal positive treatment over the next couple of months. Uh, defense and gears continues to do well, and I'm expecting orders within in our water business group in the next um, a few weeks, uh, one hopes. Uh, so it's, it's all exciting times. I look forward to talking to you in approximately three months. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.